Have you ever wondered why electric cars drop so much range in the winter time? In this video I'm gonna try to answer this question as well as give you five tips which you can use in order to maximize your electric range during the winter time. Those tricks are universal for all of the electric cars but some of them might be devoted especially to my beloved Opel Ampera. Hi, my name is Kamil and welcome to my channel. If you are new here or if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing it. It helps me a lot, motivates me for more videos and you get the great content. But before we start, let's thank our new sponsor, which is that almighty like button. We don't have any sponsor yet, but if you hit the like button, it helps me, it boosts my video in the algorithm so it can be pushed to more of the audience. So to not extend anymore, let's start. So the first question, why electric cars drops so much range during the winter? And what does it mean so much? So some of the cars might drop the range even about 40% during the winter time. Why is it so? Well, there are a few factors that are making your range less during the winter time. And people are claiming that electric cars drop the range, but the conventional car don't. But it's not a true. If you observe your conventional car, during the winter it also consumes more of the fuel, which means it drops the uh, range. But it's not that visible. And let's get to why is it so. so if you imagine your conventional car with combustion engine, it's like if you had some fireplace below your mask. So it means that while producing the kinematic energy, there is a lot of heat that needs to be taken out from combustion engine. During the warm days, most of that heat is taken off by coolant system. But in the winter time, this energy, this heat can be utilized to heat up the cabin. But electric cars are different. They do not have that much heat produced. And if you want to heat up your cabin, you need more energy. So this is the first place where your extra energy goes during the winter time. But the second thing is not only your cabin needs to be warmed up, also as we all know, batteries don't like low temperatures. So in order to keep your battery healthy and keep your battery performing well, car needs to warm it up. So if outside is very cold, the first thing your car does is warming up your battery to about 15 to 20 degrees Celsius degrees. And then your car is efficient and has the full power. And it takes a lot of energy to maintain temperature. And there is also the third factor, which not everybody is aware of, and it's called volume correction factor. And what does it mean? It means that during the winter, the same amount of air has less volume. So the lower temperature is, the less volume the same amount of air has. And what does it mean? It means that in your tires during the winter, there is less volume of the air. And as we know, the traction from your tires can influence also the range. Okay, so once we know why our cars drop that much uh, range, now let's think about what can we do in order to minimize this drop. So first thing you could do is is to dress warmly, which means you are able to turn off the heating. But seriously, nobody wants you to dress like an Eskimo. But it's important that you can reduce your heating to the level that you feel comfortable with. And when you know that you're gonna have longer run, 
just dress up accordingly and then you will feel more comfortable with less heating. New cars have solved this problem a little bit so some of the cars already have a heat pump which is much more efficient comparing to regular heating but not all of the cars already have the heat pump so it's really sometimes wise just to dress up a little bit warmer and in that way you can have a lot of range left. Okay, I have to take off these clothes. It's getting too warm. So one thing you could do in most of the cars is instead of blowing a lot of hot air in the cabin, just turn on seat heating. It takes less energy and still makes your travel more comfortable. But when you are going on short trips, you know, only to the grocery shop, you can think about of turning off the heating completely. Just leave your fan so that your screens won't get foggy. And when we come to Opel Ampera, there is one particular setting that lets you get the minimum energy and keeps your screens out of fog. So usually you would only want to set your settings to minimum so it means no heating is turned on and you would put your fan on the windscreen and on you then the power of the fan would be like two or three out of i don't know 10 it takes about eight to ten percent of the energy okay so once you know how to manage your heating then the second thing that you can think of is leaving your car plugged to the socket for all of the time. So most of the electric cars, while they are plugged into the socket, they would manage the temperature of the battery for all of the time. It will not only increase your range during the winter time, because the battery would be warmed up already while once you start your journey, but it also protects your battery from negative influence from the low temperatures. So as we all know, low temperatures are nothing good for EVs. Long exposure to low temperature can even damage either 12 volt battery or the traction battery, which is very expensive. So if you keep your car plugged to the wall for all, all of the time, not only you will have your car charged, but also your car will be protected from the low temperature. It's super important if you know that there's gonna be very low temperature during the night, just keep your car plugged if it's possible and then you know your car is protected. It is pretty common that people are leaving the, their car unplugged for some period of time and then when they get back after, I don't know, a week, the 12, ba 12 volt battery is already dead. If they have left it plugged in, the 12 volt battery would be all healthy. So the third thing that also is a little bit connected to the previous one is that you can keep your car in the warm place. So if you have an access to warm garage, just keep your car in a warm garage. Again, it takes out the risk of having very low temperature so that the battery won't get damaged. It also keeps your battery on higher temperature so you don't have to uh, heat it up so much once you start driving. And also your cabin is gonna be warmer as well so less energy needed to warm up the cabin. All of that means that you will have more range during the winter time. And there is one bonus. So your paint is not exposed to direct light and to bad weather conditions. So it stays healthier for longer as well. The fourth thing is quite clever one for most of the ca new cars. It's the possibility to warm up the cabin before you start the car from the either remote control or from the application in your phone. So while your car is plugged to the socket, you can just 
turn on the heating inside the car so it will not take the energy from the battery depending on how fast your charging is it might take a little bit but still it would warm up the cabin mostly from the outlet and once, once you start the car it's already warm and comfortable to travel with. Opel Ampera has this ability. You can turn on heating straight from your remote control and then you can do it up to three times before your journey and it takes 15 minutes to warm up the car to the settings that you have left after your last ride. So remember, if you want to use this functionality just before you turn off the car, just turn on the heating on auto and then you are fine to go. So the fifth one goes straight for Ampera users. Opel Ampera is an electric car, but it also has a combustion engine, which works as a power generator to create energy once your battery is empty. As we know, the range of Opel Ampera is not that big. In the winter it can be something between even 35 kilometers up to maybe 60 for the newer ones. So it means whenever you are going to some, I don't know, not even a road trip, but if you're doing above those 50 kilometers, you have to consider that your combustion engine will run anyways. So it's very important to think ahead because you can, instead of starting your car on battery, you could just start hold mode, which would straight on the power generator. And that means you can get a little bit of that extra heat that combustion engine takes, both for heating up the cabin and heating up also the battery. So what I would usually do when I go for a longer trip, and I know I will need to use combustion engine anyways, I would start the hold mode straight away once I start the car, but I wouldn't turn on heating yet because when your engine is still cold, if you turn on the heating, it will still use the energy from the battery and it will, it will produce the heat from the electric energy. And that's what we would like to avoid. We would like to use that side effect of power generator. So for first, let's say five to 10 kilometers until your car gets warmed, until the engine gets warmed, just don't use the heating, maybe just heat up the seats. And then once the engine is already warm, I would just turn the heating for the maximum. So it wouldn't affect much the fuel consumption because most of this heat already is wasted. And then you have warm cabin. Once it gets warm, you just switch to the electric mode again. And in that way, you can save a lot of energy. So one extra tip is that if you are traveling through local roads or within the city, it's more wise to use the electric mode. And when you are traveling on high speeds, like on the highway, it's wiser to use your power generator, which is more efficient in such conditions. And I have one extra tip for users of Opel Ampera. So there is something, there are some settings in the car that makes that under below certain temperature, the power generator would kickstart anyways. So depending on which model you have, either if it's from the beginning of the production, they don't have that setting. They will start the power generator straight away when the temperature gets low. And what does it mean it gets low? It's about minus two Celsius degrees. When the temperature goes below that, it will kickstart the power generator 
just to heat up a bit the battery and the cabin and then it will turn off the engine and you still are going on the regular EV mode. But it's quite annoying if you know that you have only the short distance to go and anyways your engine will kick start and use a bit of the fuel which you would like to avoid. So the post lifting uh, cars have that setting which lets you to turn on the engine on low temperatures or on very low temperatures and very low temperatures is empirically checked it's about minus 11 celsius degrees and below that temperature it will kick start the engine anyways but there is one trick that you can utilize if you know that your trip is going to be short you don't want your power generator to start you can just use my volt hold application which lets you request turn off the engine so even if the temperatures is below that threshold it will still not run use of this application is super simple you just turn it on connect to the obd and then just turn off the engine so that's it for today if you have your own tricks that you can extend your range just leave them in the comment below i will very appreciate it if you haven't liked my video yet just please consider doing this and if you want to know more about me just follow me on my instagram or on my facebook thanks for watching and see you next time